Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Quinn here with uh, Ozark Holistic Center. And today I actually wanna run you through uh, my set of breathing exercises. Um, it's really kind of a neat little system that I've been working on for a little while um, that has helped me in my own life and kind of calming myself down, feeling like I'm getting more oxygen, several different factors here, and just helping the body open up and move. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to breathe into what I kind of call the seven diaphragms. So really, we only have one diaphragm. It sits right here. But coming with the background, when you look at uh, cranial sacral work, when you look at the effects of breathing on the human body, there's other places that expand and contract with breath. And so I focus people into those different areas in order to kind of find them, but then also to kind of enhance that expansion and contraction. I wanted to use exercise as, sorry, I wanted to use breathing as an actual exercise. So if we look at it from that standpoint of doing these little sessions on a regular basis, then you can actually expand your breathing capacity um, and increase its efficiency. Um, and it's also its efficiency to move your sacrum and your cranium and the whole spinal structure. Breathing can act as a way to actually release the spine and keep it, um, remove some of those restrictions and keep it more fluid which will help in lots of different things, from just back pain, neck pain, to even just range of motion and functionality. So where we actually start, we're gonna run you through these different areas, um, and they, uh, just for starters, they kind of, the kind of hip area, the lower pelvic area, the abdominal area, the chest area, the upper chest, um, more up into the cranium, and then actually the full cranium. So those are the different areas we're gonna focus in. We start, because I want to show you this actual process of what we call breathing with the, with the diaphragm. So we're actually going to start first with the diaphragm, because that's actually where the breathing, the whole breathing mechanism is going to kind of originate from. Um, and then there'll just be different focusing points as we go into the different areas. So to find the, the diaphragm, um, actually the easiest thing to do is actually to exhale. We have people start by actually exhaling all of your breath. As you breathe all the way out, like really out, and continue that tightening process, you'll feel it start to tighten like right there. That is the sensation of your diaphragm actually tightening in. So as you pull that really, really tight, you'll feel that, and you'll feel this need to like release. So then as soon as you take a deep breath in, you'll naturally feel that expand. That is your diaphragm, that contraction and expansion right there, just like that. And so this is actually the first, again, this is stage one. There's a st second phase to all this where we kind of add some more factors in, but this is just your first kind of awareness how to find these different places, these different spaces. And so because of that, we, we start with that contraction where you really want to tense up and then that expansion, that letting go where you take your breath in. And again, the purpose of this, to find those places and those pieces of movement. So that's the actual breathing mechanism. So the mechanism will be with the actual diaphragm, just like that. So the first area we're gonna look at is, is the pelvic area, the pelvic floor. A lot of people have heard the term, um, or sorry, the second area we're gonna look at. People have heard the term Kegel, like the Kegel exercise, which is the, the activation of that like pelvic floor and that tightening of the space between your two, like, pu like the pubic bone area and between your two ilium right through there. So again, that pelvic floor. So the um, exhalation, the breath out, will be the contraction, which is that Kegel exercise. So in this case, as you breathe out, you're gonna tighten into that kind of like Kegel exercise where it's just really tight and hard. And then as you release it and breathe in, you'll feel that space and feel it kind of push out. You will kind of, you can actually feel kind of an outwards pressure going out almost into the hip bones as you do that. And that's gonna be that full expansion. So you really wanna come in, exhale, tighten that all the way in, real tight, and then inhale. Allow that to fill out to the outside, pushing outwards. Again, we're able to actually then create this movement with just these breathing patterns. The next area is that lower, the lower abdomen. Um, so this one, when you actually breathe out and you contract, you're gonna draw from the belly button down to that pubic bone back in towards the spine. So the exhalation will actually draw that in, the inhalation, just allow that to fill and feel it push outwards. When you exhale, right there, allow it to fill outwards. The more you kind of hit this end contraction, 
and then full expansion, the more it turns into this kind of exercise. So you're kind of trying to push, push those boundaries just a little bit. Uh, next one is that diaphragm. Again, ex exhale and contract real tight right through here, real, real tight. Each time you're in a certain way trying to figure out if you can even get it a little bit tighter. If each time you do it a little bit tighter, full breath in. So you're moving up. Your next area here is actually the, um, is, is the chest, the lungs. And so we got two components to the lungs. You got lower lungs and upper lungs. Um, and, and most of us tend to breathe more just through the upper lungs. You'll see people's, you know, chest go up as they breathe. The lower lungs, which actually can expand a lot more, are designed to actually more expand outwards and back. Um, and so if you actually see this, you can, can tell when I hold my arms here. So when you actually exhale, you'll see them slightly pull in. If you really contract, you're trying to pull that chest inwards as you do that, all the air out. And then as you breathe in, you'll see them really push out to the side. So I suggest you put your hands right here like this as you do this. So that way you can actually feel that. It actually works really well on these intercostal muscles. This is how you actually make this, this process work. And then you breathe in and you expand out. And you'll feel that expand all the way through the back. The next area is the upper chest. Most of us, again, this is how the way most of us breathe. But the, as you exhale here and you breathe down, this is the part that's a little bit different. You're gonna actually bring that shoulders, those shoulders and that chest down and come down. This is actually performed a lot by some of these uh, muscles, some of the, uh, the um, subclavius type muscles. You'll feel it in the back as well, these sub uh, subscapular muscles as well. The lats, as you're using those, those shoulder blades actually as part of the exhalation process in order to pull these down like that. And as you breathe in, you will a lot to fill. You'll feel it fill a lot in this, in this, this is the upper lobe of the lungs, actually this front chamber right here. And so you'll actually feel it more press out right through here as you fill in, out, tight, tight, tight. Again, as you're trying to exhale as much as you can and breathe in, let that expand, fill up through here. The next one is probably the most unusual one. And this is the one that some people feel, uh, some people don't feel as much, but again, just it's a focus point. If you're willing to focus here, um, it, it will work. Your cranium is made up of actually all these different bone structures uh, that come together. Uh, and so and we call them the cranial bones. And they actually have this, this slight give to them. It's more of like a flexing. And so as you uh, breathe in, it actually fills, it can expand. And as you breathe out, it, it contracts, it contracts and pulls in. So there's a slight mechanism that actually happens here. Um, and so this requires a lot more breathing up through the nose because you're working on the sinuses and the expansion of the sinuses. 